Today we're going to be talking about why your color grading sucks, man. I still see a lot of videos that um, just look like y'all not putting no effort. So today I won't be getting too technical. Today I'm just going to be going over some basic stuff that I think people just overlook and just jump straight to, um, you know, trying to get the best result without following the steps. You got to follow the steps. So before we get into this video, be sure to like and subscribe to this channel. My name is Sway. I'm a video producer. I produce some of the best looking videos on YouTube, I would say. I'm still learning. And as I continue to learn more, I help you all along the way. Yeah, let's get into it. I do have a few videos on color grading that went into the technical stuff and don't want to do all of that right now. I think the first issue I want to point out when you color grading is before you even get to that stage you need to make sure you're shooting your videos balance you need to make sure you're shooting a law profile or a flat profile shooting in these profiles is going to give you the most dynamic range and if you don't know what dynamic range is once again i won't get too technical i'm going to keep it basic and straightforward here is an example of a dynamic range situation so it would be from indoors, outdoors, and we have a subject, you know, walking towards the balcony. Now, this would be a high dynamic range situation because they're coming out of a shadow situation into a sunlight situation. And you want to make sure the transition from the shadow to the highlights is, you know, balanced. I see a lot of videos like this, like it's just overblown. And... I have on the side here um, the Lemaitre scope so you can kind of see like what this looks like and I'm going to show you like what you need to be going for as you film in your video. In a situation like this, this would mean it's like your camera itself is not able to, to handle that dynamic range. This would mean that you're using a camera that just ain't strong enough basically. Now a good camera is going to be able to capture this in a log or flat profile and still give you enough detail in whatever you're trying to shoot to you know when it comes to the color grading side of things i think that's where a lot of people go wrong they they just deal with a lot of you know horrible footage a lot of shitty footage to say the least so if you're shooting the video yourself you need to make sure that your your camera is balanced i did recommend the canon 80d because the canon 80d has like similar to this little scope um, where you can kind of see like where your highlights and shadows are as you film in the video. And that's important for filming videos. Now, if you don't have that, if your camera does not have that, but you still have a hybrid camera, meaning that you still have a, view, a viewfinder where you can look through and, and see out of. In that viewfinder, you should see a, a an expose, exposure um, level, I guess. Like basically, if your photo is too much to, I think it's usually the right means is overexposed. That will kind of help you gauge where your video is going to be. You could take the same settings, is what I'm saying, from that viewfinder in photo mode and then switch it over to video mode and then you'll have a balance. But I mean, that's hard to do. That's why I suggest cameras with the the um, histogram and it helps. So a lot of time people just color grading some shitty footage, man. And and, and it looks bad when you when you try and color grade it because your shots, that, that's the first giveaway that you, you know, dealing with some amateur ish person so y'all need to avoid that by um you could try to clean it up in post-production but it's harder but usually i try to make sure everything is perfect before we go to color grading because i know like i want to be able to have enough range to do what i need to do here as an example you can see my lamachi scopes is pretty balanced nothing is overcooked i did try to aim for the shot to be a little bit overexposed just so you know i don't be pulling from the shadows a bit too much and then it start to fall apart so i did color graded this video already i won't do that here i'll just switch over to um you know the correction file so you can see what this looks like and you can see here um yeah so i pulled it up um the shadows you can still see the the details in the shadows and we still have details in the highlights. And that's really that's really what you want to go for. That's really the look you want. That's the look that people are going to know when they see that, that you took your time and, you know what I mean, did this the right way. And it pays off because now when you go to add whatever LUT on top of this corrected, it's going to look perfect. So the second thing I want to talk about is um, balancing your videos. Balancing meaning that if you know you're shooting in the daytime, right? Consider the hour you're shooting. Consider what time it is. 
because you want to be able to go back in post production and and balance this, balance this in a way that that it still look normal, it still look right to what you was trying to go for. I'm shooting a lot of cinematic stuff, and I feel like you don't want your videos to be like fantasy, like sci-fi, like you all always want to make sure that you have your stuff balanced and it look natural as possible. I would get people asking me like, "Hey, um." What kind of camera you use? What kind of camera you use? Like, I I always get this question. Like, to be honest, I hate this question because it ain't, the camera don't matter because I could do the same thing on an iPhone and you won't, the camera does not matter. So I hate that small talk shit where people think it's the camera. It's not the camera, bro. I'm actually, I know what I'm doing. I know what the look I want and I create that look before I shoot the video and after I shoot the video. So it's not the camera. It doesn't matter. I'm going to produce a video where I don't tell you what camera it is and try to let you figure it out. And I'm pretty sure you won't be able to tell just because I, I know I know how to, you know, cheat certain things. Having your shots balanced, having your colors balanced, considering what time of day to shoot was. If it was evening, then you know your shot should be a little bit warmer. If you know it was more 10 o'clock, 9 o'clock before it gets too, too hot then you know your shots don't need to be as, you know what I mean? So it, it comes off natural because when we pull up the shot here and we look at this, I want to try and do this before and after so you can see like where this came from to where it's at. And then you can see like it still retains the, the natural look of it. And I feel like that's what you really want in your shots. That's what you want to keep. So I want to go over to the next shot and um talk about what else I see people do wrong? Let's talk about lighting. You can see an ex example here. Um, the subject was inside. This wasn't like an outside shot. And we utilized the light she had. She had like a ring light. And that was the only, I think that was the only light on in the room. And we was near some windows. But you can see how this shot is set up. Like I consider what was happening. I consider the, the, the background, the environment. I didn't just pull out the camera and shoot. I consider what was going on, even though it was a, a um, this was a wedding and they was like getting dressed and stuff like that. Even though that was happening, I still consider what was going on and try to position everything to look as planned and prep as possible. And, and, and look at the shot. Like you would think we set up not, we didn't, I didn't set up anything. I just came in the room, see what was going on, took the shot and this is what we got. So you want to do that. You want to consider you know, where stuff at, where you're lighting at, and try to, if you can't move the subject, move around the subject and, you know, until you get that shot, because that's what's going to help this, this cinematic look sell. That's, that's going to help you in the, in, in the end of it. So let's see what this looked like after, you know, I color corrected it and balanced it. And you can see, um, I'll pull up the scopes here so you can see too, nothing is, is too overdone. Everything is, it might the, the blacks could raise a bit, but everything is done in context. Everything is done with a certain look in mind. And as you can see, like nothing looks too overblown. Nothing looks too overdone. I still have room. I didn't apply a lot onto this either. We, I'm, I want to save that for last. I want to talk about that. And yeah, I, I try to keep the look as natural as possible and try to use natural lights and just balance off my shots to give it give it that cinematic look you can see here it paid off everything looks good um nice and balanced the window is in is in shot out the highlights is in blown the shadows could raise a bit but you want to consider these stuff and that that's what helps your video to not look like okay this person didn't know what they was doing because you could tell you could i i could see a bit i could like look at some random videos on youtube and i could tell like when this person is random or just don't know what they're doing, really and truly, just don't know what they're doing. They just, they're just slapping on whatever presets they find and they're just calling it a day. Like, if you want a, a unique look, you can't just do that. But if you want your stuff to come out with a, with a touch that only you could do, you got to, you got to follow these steps, man. So let's look at, um, I have a next shot here and then we could talk about LUTs. You know, I did drop a new LUT pack called uh, Minimalist. It's real simple LUTs, stuff that I feel like you could practice with and just get an overall hang of how to apply these LUTs. I keep going over these steps so you could follow them in line to get the best results. And I feel like people just overlook it and, you know, just slap it on and call it a day and hire get out of that and you don't really get the results, you know.
So here you can see we have another, um, this was a wedding I shot. I was the um, behind the scenes person for another photographer. So I was um, just getting as much nice shots as possible. So like I mentioned before, I, I didn't apply any LUTs to this video. This is all just color corrected stuff. And um, I wanna show you what this looks like. As you can see, the shot here is pretty much flat. The camera I used, these this was this was an old shoot at that too. So don't don't even think this was recent. This is like old stuff. But I was I was always practicing going about it the right way from then to get the results I want and that's why they still look relevant. So yeah, I was shooting flat and I want to show you what it looked like me adding the corrections. Now you can see everything is nice and natural, cinematic. And it, and it just looked good. Once again, we didn't have no lights. This was a window off his right. And just considering the room, when you walk in an environment, consider you know, where your light saw is at and try to position yourself around the subject. Because a lot of times, I mean, you could tell them, hey, sit over here, let me get this shot. Or if it's a situation where they're over there talking and you just want to grab that moment, you got to look for the best angle, the best way to capture that without involving yourself or disturbing what was going on with them. So, yeah, he was sitting there. We had a a window off to the right and I was able to capture the shot and you could see um, how that looks. Now, I want to add a LUT onto this to show you like the LUT should be your final thing you add onto your, to your video. That's why I saved this for last. I do have some LUTs. I'm going to pull them up, let you guys see. Make sure you pick up any LUT pack I have there. It does help the channel. It does help these videos to keep coming. Don't just look at them. Pick them up. Try them out. I appreciate it. I'm going to add a LUT here and show you, like, maybe something from the new pack. All right, so we got my latest LUT pack. I don't know which is which right now. I'm going to just randomly add something I think that would look good. I'll just flip through and... You know go from now but i added this light called game um let's see what it does turn this off okay so it was on um let me choose something where i so when i pull it up you can see it you could have seen the difference just now but y'all yeah, okay so let's try this so this night is called this lot is called nuevo and espanol is new so look at this um let me turn this on and off so you can see the changes happening because sometimes you all like to see drastic changes to feel like something happening but yeah i like this let pack it's subtle it's clean and the let again should be your last thing you should add onto your footage your let should be your final it's almost like the the whipped cream or whatever you put on cake whatever as the final thing, the, the the spark, whatever, like the final thing is you add on a cake. It's like that should be a last thing. Never put on a LUT over raw footage that you haven't corrected. Any. It's going to look stupid. Don't do that. Okay, please do not do that. Add your LUT after you corrected your flat footage, and then you're going to get a more professional look. It's going to look controlled. It's going to look intentional. It won't look like you just randomly... You know, you don't. I don't want random shit, so that's how I do it. So, yeah, we have the intensity dial over here. You could turn it down if you if it if you feel like it's too much. I try not to do too much, keep them nice and balanced. But look at this light here. I'm gonna pull this up big, so you can see that. When you t follow these steps, consider everything I said in this video from top to bottom. You get this look here. This is a look after you follow those steps you won't get this before so follow the steps go about it right the first time and you're gonna get the look you want and it's gonna look intentional you know yeah i think that's about it if you're still learning the steps before this like the dials and all that the contrast and you know what all that does i do have some videos on color grading where i went into all of that this video i just wanted to touch on some of the stuff i i think i saw before like the errors before people actually sit down and start editing the video so yeah make sure y'all stay on top of that keep y'all game up keep learning um keep applying and yeah let's keep this channel growing so 
If you made it this far into the video, I appreciate you. Be sure to check out the links in my description. I just dropped a new lot pack and I have some other stuff if you edit in videos, music videos, whatever kind of video is all going to help you to achieve that cinematic look. My niche, I want to say, is the cinematic thing. That's that's where I come in. I come in and make shit look like films, like real films. So if you want those kind of looks, then you're in the right place. Stay locked in. Let's keep it pushing. Let's see if we can hit 10,000 10, before Christmas. That'll be nice. And yeah, I'm out.